Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on Tax Template Simplified or Quick 2125 HST Worksheet. My name is Jay Goodis, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Tax Templates, Inc. I hope everybody is doing well, staying safe, and healthy. Um, for today's webinar, we do have access again to the Q&A. So if there's any questions along the way, please go ahead and use the Q&A function within the program. Uh, the goal today is to spend about 15, maybe 20 minutes on the worksheet and leave the rest of the time for any questions that anyone may have. Um, if you aren't signed up already, we do have notification emails that can be sent to you about future updates to this worksheet and other webinars. Um, so if you are a TTI client, please feel free to just provide your email and name in the Q&A and one of my colleagues will make sure that you are notified directly. Okay, so with that, let's get started. All right, so inside the TTI folder, I'll just bring everyone's attention to a new link we have here, which allows you to sign up for future register, sorry, to sign up for future webinars by registering here. This link will take you directly to the page for signups. We will have more in the coming weeks and months. Uh, so in the TTI folder, we're gonna jump into the simplified or quick method worksheet. Um, I do have it already open on my screen, so let's jump in. Before I start, I'll just highlight a few important points. Uh, first off, on the left side, we do have some links in the worksheet. They're really useful for navigating the solution to jump to different sections such as motor vehicles and home office and capital assets. So please feel free to use those to help you navigate the worksheet. We also have TTI's completion guide. Um, so the completion guide is a built-in wizard to take you step-by-step -step through the worksheet. So the orange text is a link. So you just click the link and you can go ahead and fill out the worksheet and it will take you step by step. Um, also in this worksheet, we do have links to YouTube videos, PDF examples, along with FAQs. You can just link, click those links at the top as needed. Now for this worksheet, um, it hasn't been updated for 2020 yet as we're still waiting for CRA to release the official 2020-2125 form. As soon as it is released, we are gonna make any uh, changes that are announced and then you'll have this in the next update. So please keep your eye out for that email we're hoping uh, the CRA is gonna release the form very shortly. All right, so the purpose of this worksheet is for our clients that are not yet incorporated and they've asked us to complete their 2125 along with their GST, HST return, along with their personal tax return. Now this worksheet does support the ability using the simplified method or the quick method and will support whether or not your clients give you the information via statement or box of receipt, shoe boxes um, or piles, whatever the case may be. All right, so let's go ahead and use the completion guide to take a step-by-step through the worksheet. So the first step here is asking us for the GST HST calculation method. So you can choose from the drop-down menu, whether it be the simplified method or the quick method. Um, the reason we offer not applicable and net amounts is for situations such as the client has already taken the HST GST amount out of the expenses they provided you. And it allows you to use this worksheet uniformly throughout the firm, even if some clients have done some of the work themselves. So for this example, we're going to start with the simplified method. So I'll choose that from the drop down menu. And the next step from the completion guide is to include the applicable sales tax. So for example, uh, if we're using Ontario rates, I will go ahead and put in 13%. And that means that all the income and expenses that I enter, um, we will break out the 13% HST. So immediately below is really a duplicate of the 2125. So I can go ahead and include things such as our income and various expenses. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. And as I am, if you look on the right side of the screen, you will notice that the worksheet is breaking out the GST HST portion and providing the net amount for the 2125. So all amounts that we do enter need to be including the HST collected and the worksheet will break out those amounts. Now, a question you might be asking is why do we have five columns? And there's a few reasons for that. Um, the first is, let's assume our client has a few different supply expenses. If we enter in those different supply expenses, it will sum the total to the right side of our screen. Another reason we have multiple columns is that the worksheet supports different rates. So let's assume that we have a client who's operating in multiple jurisdictions. We can use column one for say Ontario and perhaps column two for Alberta. And if that's the case, we can update the rate in the second column and then all income and all expenses that we enter into each column will get broken out at those rates. 
Another useful area for these is maybe we have clients who are dealing with you know, exempt services and therefore there is no HST implications. So in those cases, any amounts that we enter in the exempt column will be at 0% and there'll be no GST or HST implications. Another popular uh, method of using these columns is in some provinces such as BC, there isn't PST on uh, it says meals and so on. So if that's the case, we might wanna have a separate column just for BC meals and entertainment. So when we get to that column or that row, we can ensure that we put them and they are being picked up appropriately. Okay. So this works out really well if your clients have given you a statement of income and receipts for the year, but what if they give you a shoebox or a pile of receipts? What are our options there? Well, in the worksheet, we actually have a tabulations and these blue boxes are actually links. So for example, if I look at my supplies, if I click the blue link here next to supplies, it will take us to a tabulations tab. And on this tab, we can take those piles of receipts and put in all the different amounts that our clients provided. And once we enter in all those amounts, the $310 that you see totaled at the top, we can click that link and it will take us back to the main workbook and the $310 is there as well. Other than that, everything else really is a duplicate of the 2125, where you see black line, these black boxes here, these are line numbers directly from the personal tax return. So these are really great to tie in as part of reconciliations, and I'll show you a reconciliation momentarily. If you have a client that has more complex scenarios, such as partners and such, you do have the ability to fill at the bottom section here as well. Uh, they're there when you need them. All right, so the next step of the worksheet is the motor vehicle expenses of the worksheet. And here's where we can include the client's motor vehicle income uh, expenses for the year. So let's assume that our client had $10,000 of fuel and $3,000 of insurance. Now, immediately you'll notice that we have some yellow cells. And when we see yellow or red in the worksheet, it tells us we need to do something or there's a potential error in the worksheet. In this case, it's asking us for the business and total kilometers. So we can go ahead, enter in those amounts and what the worksheet will do is break out the HST ITCs based on the business use. Now, one of the things we also add to this workbook to uh, allow our clients to solve some key numbers quickly are mileage reasonabilities. And this is very useful uh, to make sure that when we're presenting the mileage to the CRA, we're providing them with reliable, reasonable numbers in the hopes that it prevents audits down the road. We provide you with two options for the mileage reasonability. The first one is based on maintenance records. So if you have those mechanic receipts from two different points during the year, you can enter in both dates into the worksheet along with your odometer readings. And we'll look to extrapolate that to come up with a reasonable mileage. The second one, which is used more frequently is based on the amount of fuel. So in this worksheet, we put in $10,000 of fuel up top. So I can go ahead and select the region that might apply for our client. Let's assume that they're in Calgary. We can choose our fuel type, regular, premium, or diesel. Let's assume regular. And then we can enter in the liters per hundred kilometers for the car. If you're not sure what that is, immediately to the left, you have this link and you can click this link and it will take you to Natural Resources Canada, which has that information on almost every vehicle. So let's assume that our client's car is 10 liters per 100 kilometers. And based on the information entered in the worksheet, um, our estimate is that they drove approximately 94,130 kilometers. So since I'm in Excel, I'm just gonna make it equal to the number below. And then I'll put in our business kilometers, either what our client provided from the log or if that information is not available, like it is in most, like it's not in most cases, we'll just put in whatever the reasonable percentage is. And again, hopefully that looks more reasonable to CRA when they receive the files. Okay, scrolling down, we have two more motor vehicles. This is for our clients that might change their cars during the year. So, so we have vehicle number two, and we also have vehicle number three. Scrolling down further, we can get to our home office and capital assets. The home office works very similarly to the motor vehicles, except it's using the business area and the total area of the home. So again, we just enter in the applicable amounts and then we'll calculate those GST, HST, ITCs. For capital assets, if our client, for example, purchases a computer, we can go ahead and enter in 
the purchase price for the computer and the worksheet will break out the ITC and the net amount on the computer equipment. We do allow all of the assets and the classes here to be overridden so you can use the assets however works best for your client. And at the very bottom of the worksheet, we have the allowable motor vehicle ITCs based on CCA. So this is very useful for our clients that purchase our vehicle, but they use it less than 90% for business. When that is the case, we collect the ITCs based on the amount of CCA being claimed. So this is something normally being tracked on the personal tax return. So all we need you to do is enter in the amount of CCA entered on the personal tax return, and then we will calculate the ITC. All right, so next what I'm going to do is take you to the next tab, which is our GST HST return tab at the very bottom. And I find this tab extremely helpful. Uh, I've reviewed thousands of these in my career, and I always found it challenging when the personal tax return didn't match the worksheet. So here is our 2125 reconciliation. All the numbers in the black boxes here with the white text should agree to the number line numbers on the 2125. If the numbers do not match, it means that there's something missing in the worksheet or there's something missing on the personal tax return. So if in your office, your colleagues, you have junior staff or uh, young, uh, or young staff or co-ops who are preparing these, one of the things I highly recommend is they ensure that all these numbers match before submitting them for review to the managers and the partners. Once this is all reconciled, if you scroll down to the very bottom or you can use the links at the top, we then have a completed GST HST return. All right, so a few more things that I'd like to show you. Um, first, in this example, we prepared it using the simplified method, but we can also do it using the quick method very simply. What I can do is go ahead and click the link to take me back to the main tab, the worksheet tab. I can choose quick method from the drop down menu. I can then go back to the HST return tab. And when using the quick method, what we're going to have to do is put in the quick method calculations. If you're not sure what those are for each province, you can go ahead and get that information by clicking the RC4058. A link right at the top here. So let's go ahead and just put in the applicable quick method rates for this example. And once the numbers have been entered, if we scroll to the very top, you'll notice that what the worksheet will do is pick up the inclusion from the quick method, which is the difference between the GST HST uh, collected and the amount calculated under the quick method. The worksheet is also going to pick up the 1% of 30,000 in sales as part of the quick method. And going back down into the HST return, you'll see that the ITCs on the capital assets are still there as well. So it's very easy to jump between the simplified and quick method. And where that can be very helpful is let's assume that we have a new client and we're trying to determine whether or not we should be using the simplified or the quick. You can jump between the two methods to see what number is best. Now, when doing this comparison, you know, the key number that everyone's looking at is going to be the net tax after total at the very bottom. Um, however, I just want to share one more important feature is that when comparing the quick method, we do have the inclusion from the quick method that goes on the T1 return. So when trying to compare the two methods, please consider the personal taxes on the inclusion uh, combined with the quick method HST calculated at the bottom, just so we're doing an apples to apples approach. Um, for a lot of files that I've seen this way, there um, are thousands of dollars one way or the other by choosing the correct method. Okay, so that takes you through called the main components of TTI simplified or quick method worksheet. Um, what I'm going to do now is, is show you our import feature that is available for this solution. So to get to the import inside your TTI uh, folder, you'll see there's a client input. And in here, there's a client input sheet. Now this specific sheet, the client input sheet is something that you can share with your clients uh, we have many clients that put it directly on their website for their clients to download. Um, and the idea is that the clients can fill this out themselves. So here's an example. It's a very, it's a very simple sheet where we put in some basic information uh, about the client. They can all go ahead and just put in totals if they like, or alternatively at the very bottom of this worksheet, you'll see that we have a tabulations for the clients as well. So they can go ahead and add up all the receipts themselves. So let's go ahead and let's open up one that's already been completed. 
So here's our complete example. We sent this to Mr. A and Mr. A filled out all of their numbers uh, in the worksheet. And we got tabulations and amounts that they've input. So you can use one or the other. They can either use the inputs, they can use the tabulations, or they can use both. And on this client input sheet, you'll also no notice that it's unlocked. So if you wanna protect it with a password for your clients, you can do that. If you wanna gather some more information by putting in some new cells or some insert some rows, you have the ability to do that as well. We've kept it very flexible for you to use for your clients. Okay. So what I'm going to do is in order to show you how this works, I'm going to reopen the workbook that we started off the webinar with. This is the simplified or quick method worksheet. It does have to be open. I'm then gonna go ahead and open up the completed example that Mr. Ray sent us. And I'm gonna move this sheet into the other workbook. So to do this, I'm gonna right click on the import tab. I'm going to select move or copy. I'm then gonna go ahead from the drop down menu and select the main workbook. And I'm gonna hit okay. And what this is going to do, it's going to move Mr. Ray's worksheet into the main workbook. And if I select the worksheet tab in the main workbook, you will now notice that it's been fully populated with Mr. Ray's numbers. So effectively what we're doing is we're allowing Mr. A to help prepare the worksheet to prevent those transposition errors and also to save us as much time as we can during one of the busiest points of the year for a lot of accounting firms. So what our staff can do is they can then look at the worksheet, fill in any of the yellow cells to make sure they're complete and then move the data over to their tax preparation software and make sure that everything reconciles. Okay, I have one more thing to show you, then I'll open up to any uh, Q&A that's available. So please go ahead and enter in your Q&As directly into the Q&A box if you have any. But what I will do is I'll just jump back into the folder where we were. And you'll notice here that we also have some subflavors. And what the subflavors are for, uh, they actually have currency built directly into the worksheets. So if you have a client that might operate, say, an American business, you can go ahead and put the amounts in American and we will go ahead and convert them to Canadian vice versa if a client has a Canadian business. And when they might have a US filing, we might need to translate all of that to US dollars. You can do that in the convert from Canadian. So these ones are probably used about five to 10% of the time. The one I showed you is about 90%, uh, but it's good to know that those are available. All right, so one of the questions that just uh, came in was about moving the information to the tax return program. Uh, about whether or not we can import information directly into the program. Um, so we are in Excel and we do have some clients that have gone ahead and what they do is they add a sheet directly in the workbook and they've got a document and they just copy and paste or they move in their own document that allows them to import it directly into the tax preparation file. Um, we have tried that in the past, but due to some of the challenges with um, being there multiple tax preparation softwares, moving lines, multiple 2125s and other technical difficulties in moving the data, we found that in our test groups that was much faster for clients to just go ahead and enter in the few numbers that might apply. Um, but if that's something that you're looking to do, we do have clients uh, that have built that directly to the worksheets and you can do that as well. Uh, so for example, if this were the blank 2125 document that you received with your TTI suite, you can simply add that import document directly into the workbook and then it becomes part of your master and then you can use that on a go forward basis for all your clients. So it's something you can do, but it's not something that we have built in directly for you. Um, yep, so there's another question about um, the, the importing. I believe there, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if the question is about whether the import tab that we've done here, but in this case, uh, you can rename the import tab here. You can also rename it on the, the one that, uh, which is the original one before we moved it in, this can be renamed. Um, how the import works, it's actually looking for name cells in the document. So on a lot of our, uh, a lot of our, our cells names are looking for name cells when it's moved in, it's not looking at the name of the tab. So you can go ahead and make that change. And if the question was about importing into a tax preparation program, then yes, you can move the tab to the back or you can move the tab over to the front. Okay, so I think that takes us through um, everything to go through in the 2125 worksheet. 
A few things I'll just remind everyone is one that you've got reference cells directly in the solution. So you can reference those to other of your client working papers if they provide them to you. We also have the review ticks built into the worksheet. So we use O for correct, X for incorrect, Q for question, M for manager, and P for partner. It's a way for you to communicate through the document uh, when you have multiple people in a firm using the solutions. And when using the completion guide in the worksheet, you do have to go ahead and put in a review tick into those orange cells that will take you to the next step. All right, so if there are, are no further questions, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show uh, one more worksheet since we have a few more minutes. Um, and that's gonna be a TTI's 4X worksheet. And if you haven't used this worksheet, it is extremely popular. And what the 4X worksheet allows you to do is it has a foreign exchange rate going as far back as 1951 directly into the worksheet. And it's very easy to use. Uh, so all you have to do is come to the very first column, select the currency you're looking for. So let's assume US dollars. You can then decide whether or not you'd like to go to or from Canadian dollars. Let's assume we want to go to Canadian dollars. And then the worksheet will choose one of six popular rate types. We have daily, monthly, annual, one month ended, one year ended, and 91 days ended. Uh, just for some clarity, the one year ended is the last 12 months. So an example would be February 1st to January 31st, as an example. So once you choose your popular rate type, you can then enter in the date that you're looking for. So let's say May, let's go March 3rd, 2015. There is our rate on that specific date. Well, let's assume our client purchased a piece of machinery for $10,000. You will notice that the worksheet has now translated that to Canadian dollars for us. And again, we can leave a reference in the worksheet along with any notes on the side. Uh, each one of these rows operates independently. So if you're looking for the monthly rate, you can change it to monthly. If you're looking for annual, you can change it to annual. And of course we can change any of these dates along the way as well. So if I wanted to look for something for 2017, we can do that directly in the worksheet as well. Now, if you only require a few rows in the worksheet and you wanna see everything disappear, well, if you just go to the, the first column, which is the currency column and just hit delete, you will see that everything below it will now disappear. And for anyone who might need a, a unique exchange rate for a very custom period of time, at the very bottom, there is a custom tab. And in this tab, what you're able to do is put in a start date and along with an end date. And what we'll do is provide you with the average rate during that specific period. So that's very useful for clients that might have a, a short year end for a corporate tax return, as an example, where they need a unique time period. Yeah. So whether it is trying to find a rate quickly or we need to translate perhaps a corporate tax return from one currency to another um, or even a personal tax return, whatever you need to use the worksheet for, you have all the currency options available. Uh, for this specific worksheet, along with investment bookkeeping, we update the worksheet every Monday. So every Monday, you're able to go to your download and get the last week's rates. Uh, we also update this worksheet um, whenever we have a normal update. So we have an update coming out shortly to reflect the simplified or quick method. So when we release that update, uh, this will be reflected in the latest rates as well. Um, one more thing I'll highlight to you is at the very top, you can go ahead and actually choose one of a few pre, uh, a few options we provide automatically for you. So whether that be Forex, which is regular, but you can also choose things like financial statements Forex. And you'll see on the far right that we actually populate a lot of those common uh, inputs that you might require when translating financial statements. So just a few things that we look to do in the worksheet to make it a little bit more streamlined for clients who have these types of situations. All right, so with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining today's uh, webinar on the Simplified or Quick Method Worksheet. If we didn't get to your question or you have further questions, please feel free to send us an email. We're happy to get back to you. Um, otherwise, there's a short survey question at the very end, and we'd really appreciate it if you can answer it for us. So thank you all very much and have yourselves a great afternoon.